Hey everybody, this is NYC Geek Society. I'm John, this is Victor. Uh, so we just uh, finished Uncharted 4. Yes. Uh, so we went through uh, the beginning of chapter 17 up till the end of the game, which is the end of chapter 22, essentially, and an epilogue. So, uh, I'm going to do our typical thing where I'll give a five second clip of where we started and then a five second clip of where we ended, which probably just be the credits. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so, uh, we started our play session here. So, we're headed to the northern side of the island? Yeah, New Devon. It's home to the founders of Libertalia. And that's where Rafe is taking you. And we ended our play session here. Alright, so Victor, a lot to cover this time around because yes. we, we played a lot. Um, you want to start off? Your thoughts? Well, we, we, we started... Um, we had, um, I guess from the last time, we played that set, chapter 17, which I think is very important because it's Elena and it's all about Elena and, and Nate and about the rela their relationship. Yeah. And it's, it was uh, definitely about trust. So I thought that was very powerful. And the acting was amazing. It was so well done. And it was just, it was just great to watch them. They were so, they were so good together. And after, after um, all these games, the... Um, the, they're just so comfortable with each other the actors. Yeah. and so it was so refreshing to watch um, and um, it's it's sort of it's sort of we needed that and what I like about it is that um, he sort of had his moments with all these different characters you know what I mean um, maybe not so much with Sully but he had that in the last game yeah I mean the last game was pretty much just all Nate and Sully mm -hmm. you know so uh, I, yeah, I agree. I don't think it was a, it was necessary to have that much too much Sully in there. No, so it was. I think it was. It was the way it worked out. He had he had a. It was about Sam and Nate, and it was about um, Elena and Nate, and about um, really the the two the the two phases of his life. The thing that sort of set his whole life on a trajectory right. that he's been on, and and his new life. And the choice he has to make, if he has to make it, which Elena is not really forcing him to make that choice. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, the first thing I, I would like to talk about is kind of what I brought up last time, too, that, and, and what you just said, that uh, Elena and Nate, you could tell that these characters are in love with each other. And I've never really seen that convincingly in a video game before, done just through <clears throat> body language and tone. And I find that extremely impressive. Um, like a really powerful scene to me was um, actually involved with optional co uh, conversation when they're riding the elevator up together. And, um, you know, they're just talking and you know he's basically apologizing for lying to her and all mm -hmm. that and uh you know she kind of says something to the degree that you know well you know we are married <laughs> and for better or for worse and all that and you know then she goes to kind of walk away and he just lingers there for a while and you can tell, like, he's, he's, like, sobbing a little bit. Like, uh, he was really scared that he was going to lose her, you know? <laughs> and what I thought was interesting about that part, too, is that I was in control of the camera, but only to a degree. It wouldn't let me turn on their faces. And it almost gave, like, the feeling as if this is a personal moment between mm -hmm. them. Like, um... You know what I mean? Like, Nate didn't want to be seen. <laughs> it was it was sort of interesting to me. And Naughty Dog's very good at, again, 
revealing something about the character you're playing through gameplay or interactivity. Right. <clears throat> um, so yeah, everything with Elena was incredible to that degree. And I agree with you that, that Sam sort of represents the, the old Nate, you know, the past Nate and his past, literally. Um, and I also thought it was very interesting uh, how the stories between the pirates and the stories between our characters were lining up a little bit, you mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah, uh, and some well, of those set pieces, I mean, you want to talk about some of that, too. Which ones? What do you want to talk about? Um, well, one thing, <clears throat> one of the one of the best moments of that chapter with Elena, though, was the waterfall sequence. When he goes over the waterfall. Yeah. Because that was, a, that was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> so he goes over the waterfall. A jeep goes over the waterfall. And then he just like. Right, right. He just uh, grabs that, that branch <clears throat> with his, uh, with the rope. And then he's just hanging there. That, that was a great moment. <laughs> Again, and that harkens back to the train in the second one. Yeah. He's hanging there. That was, that was a fantastic moment. Yeah. And then um, just the rest of it, I was, was uh, I was completely engaged in the search. And then when they when they go down, um, they go down into the tunnels. That that was amazing with the mummies and the those exploding mummies. Yeah. Um, oh, we didn't even talk about that boss fight that you ended up having with those guys with those big big Gatling gun oh things. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, finally, it, it we realize how to kill them by two grenades blows off the helmet and mm -hmm. you gotta shoot him in the head. But, I was man, telling you, use those crowd. grenades. Yeah, I mean, but it was so intense just because, like, guys are coming from every angle. And something else that I want to make note of, again, to kind of conclude what we've been talking about with our sort of critique of some of the gameplay elements. Mm -hmm is the last part of the game, I kind of just gave up on stealth. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I played it like an Uncharted game, and everything instantly became more fun. You know? Right, right. <laughs> so it's exactly what I thought, that I think that it's getting some mixed reactions. Right. Uh, because of that, I think people that go into it and typically you know, instinctually go in guns blazing and all out shootout like you're used to in Uncharted, they're going to have a lot of fun here. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas... I think that's the way most people are playing it. So I think so too. Uh, but whereas, you know, if you try to do it more stealth-like, uh, like I tend to play all video games, um, it's a struggle. Uh, you can't be a pacifist in this game. And even you got angry... <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I'm fine with be having violence in video games. It's, I don't... No, what, what, I, what I meant is it's not like, uh, it's, and it really is not like Metal Gear, where you can knock right. these guys out. You're, you're killing them no matter what you're doing. Right, um, right. You can't, you literally can't be a pacifist in this game. <laughs> um, so that, that was cool. Uh, oh, we didn't even talk about the fact that I was right, that, uh... Sam was hiding something because we mentioned that in the other video, but we didn't. No, we 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 did talk about that. Oh, that's right. right. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a groggy sometimes, so bear with me. That's yeah, right. it's like uh, it's well, past one o'clock in the morning for us right now, so <laughs> so if we're a little out of it, that's why. But um, yeah, yeah I mean the other set pieces like the like I said, that was like a boss fight when you were taking on those guys with the Gatling gun. Um, at yeah. first there was one, and then there was two of them. Um, but then they became easier to kill. I can't even. I can't believe that there was a point in that general proximity uh, when we were battling these guys that I actually ran out of ammo. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that's what was happening. Well, because you were pinned down, so you yeah. couldn't get. You couldn't pick up any more ammo. Um. So it, it it was very exhilarating, and I started having a lot more fun. Once I gave up on trying to be more stealth. And once you knew that once one shot was fired, everybody was going to exactly, open up on you. Exactly. Um, 
A scene that I also thought was extremely powerful was when they arrive at that uh, table with yeah. all the pirates. Yes. And just Nate realizes, like, these are the best pirates of all time, essentially. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. and they were out, like, like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he had a real personal revelation there that if he kept doing these things, that's that would be his future as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that was a really beautiful moment. Um, I mean, should we just dive into talking about the end, you think? Oh, uh, why not? Okay. <laughs> so... Spoiler alert, I mean, if you're this far in, you probably... We've been talking yeah. all the time. <laughs> but there's an epilogue where... Uh, well, that's not the ending. Well, but uh, I mean, that's really what I want to talk about. Right, but I, I, I think we should mention the fact that, unlike the other games, there was no supernatural element oh, at all yes. in this game, which it did not need at all, whatsoever. And I wonder if people are disappointed with that. Um, I, they, they really shouldn't be because the story, the story was strong enough that it didn't need it and it would have been out of place. Let's face it. This was a story about, uh, Sam's obsession anyway. It wasn't about. Well, let me ask you something because it's, it's difficult for me to figure out how to articulate this, but maybe we can do it here. Um, I said in a previous video that if the objective of Uncharted was to be the perfect sort of Indiana Jones Pulp Fiction video game. Uh, Uncharted 2 did that at, and perfectly. It, that's mm -hmm. a 10 out of 10 out of achieving that. Um, did Uncharted 4 sort of become something else? It, it, it almost feels to me that, and I, I touched upon it a little bit before, but the 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 characters and the story were heavier. This was not a light-hearted game, or not as much. It, it was it was it was. No, deeper. you you really, you really felt you really felt that lives were at stake here, and um, and not just lives in the sense of you get killed, uh, in the sense that your life gets ruined. Huh. Yeah. And so what I was going to say is, do you think that's why the supernatural element would have felt out of place? I, it, I think so, yeah. It, it kind of started to go into almost a different, what I, would you say genre? Or, I don't know. It, it started to not be Indiana Jones. Yes. Yeah. This, this became more, more adventure thriller, um, even though uh, it just adventure wasn't. Adventure thriller. Right. Yeah. It, you know, because of the characters and the. And the sort of criminal element that was going on here, it really didn't need any of those supernatural touches. And it, 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 I'm glad they went and they went without it. I'm glad that wasn't a part of it at all. But you also said that the you didn't think the other games needed it either. But... They, didn't, they didn't need it, but they were not unwelcome because it is part of that genre. But now this became this became something else, more personal. Yeah, I mean the fact that they even found the ship is almost. Um, it's it's almost supernatural in itself, and it's legendary. Yeah, and in a sense that it reminds me of the, uh, the Goonies because I mentioned that because right. in the Goonies they find a pirate ship in the cave and then you know the map that, that they went you know the map they were following on a lark ended up being real you know you know what I mean, and they they were so rewarded not by the treasure but by finding it in the first place just like the way Sam was. Just the way Sam was in in the, in Uncharted Four, so um, it really didn't need those things because you didn't need those to resolve the story. Yeah, you know the cautionary. You know a lot of these things are a cautionary tale. That's why they have the supernatural element at the end, especially right. with Indiana Jones. They wanted right. the power of the art for evil, and they open it up, and it turned on them. But here, the whole plot is has already been the cautionary the, tale, and once you get to that table with all the dead pirates, it's, that's it. That's the whole... That's the tip. Cautionary It's tip. agreed, agreed, will kill, will kill and destroy everybody. Yeah. And, you know, that's the theme 
you know, that's the theme running throughout. Now, there's different types of greed. There's greed for money, but there's also obsession. You can be obsessed with money, and we saw Avery's obsession getting worse. And as you were descending into those caves, and you saw those body parts, and and you saw his his obsession, Avery's obsession, consuming him, and it culminated with um, all of his him killing all of his friends, all those dead pirates who trusted him. And the same thing with uh, Sam. Sam's obsession almost destroyed all of them as well. So, um, and it, it didn't need those because, again, the supernatural element teaches us a lesson at the end, and this didn't need it whatsoever. Hmm. So I'm just glad. Thank you, Naughty Dog, for not doing that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, also, none of the protagonists died. Yes. Which I'm thankful for. Yeah, I'm happy about that as well. Because it almost would have been a cheap trick. I mean, it was it was it came close enough yeah. where you felt that the characters learned their lessons, and but, they did. But what's great about Nathan Drake with a lot of adventure heroes that we know is that he always finds a way to to win. You know, and uh, it felt much more to his personality that he did figure out a way to save his brother's life. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and uh, I just want to make a note, too, that we keep talking about it. The surprise performance of the game was the guy who played Wraith. We, yeah, we, we both really want to look up more about it. Yeah, he, he, was, he was fantastic. And, it, you know, he, he did it with that, that very sort of straight face <laughs> and that sort of smug... Yeah. S what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. He stole every scene that he was in. He really did. You realize, yeah, he was he was great. He was very enjoy up until the end. I mean, even just that sword fight and then just everything it was great. Yeah, this this spoiled rich kid that everybody hates, <laughs> who's actually jealous of Nate, the poor kid, but because Nate's accomplished so much more unbelievable stuff, that yeah. he's in competition with him. It, it's it's yeah, it's it's um, it's he was great. He stole every scene he was in, like I said. Yeah, and just, it turns out, I mean. Again, uh, he kind of walks the line where he is a complete asshole, but for some reason, he does try to kill Nate, but he doesn't out, like, he doesn't shoot him, you know, like, it's very interesting, that dynamic. And again, it, go, it ties in with the whole, what the whole story's about. His obsession kills him. Yeah. Um, alright, so, uh, you know, everybody kind of everybody survives, and uh, then we get this epilogue where we get to play as Cassie, mm -hmm. uh, Nate, and Elena's daughter, teenage daughter, and I thought that that was wonderful. It was, it was so heartwarming, and we see uh, their dog who is named Vicky, <laughs> yeah. and we see pictures of Sully holding a baby. <laughs> And it, it's exactly what I, I would have wanted from him. It's a great ending. Um, but what do you think? Do you think that sometime in the future we'll play the adventures of Cassie Drake? <laughs> hey, maybe we can have a we can have a crossover. Lara Croft and Cassie Drake. <laughs> well, everyone always wanted Lara and Nate to cross over. But this would this would this would even be better. <laughs> yeah, this would this would even be better. Um, yeah, I mean I, that that was fun. I liked the way they rendered her. She sort of looked a little bit yeah, like, she liked like both. both. I like to see them as parents, and you see Nate being gray, you know, gray now, gray yeah. hair, and the cabinet full of of his stuff. Yeah, of all the treasures he's picked up along the way from all the adventures, and they're gonna have the talk and then let them know what what they've done. So. Yeah, so definitely, if they wanted to continue the series somewhere down along the line, I mean, she's old enough where if they wanted to do this five years from now, she would be uh, probably a teenager, late teenagers or in college or something, where she would be the right age to start adventures. Hmm. But would it hinder the lessons learned? You know, Nate went through this arc. Everybody, every generation's got to learn their own lessons. You know that. So it wouldn't undo things, but it actually would just cause the drama because she would have her father. Nate might even take on like the Sully role, even mm -hmm. you know, like don't do the same mistakes that I did. Right. But it could be interesting. Yeah. Maybe like for 
PlayStation 5 or 6, you know, you wait a while and bring it back. Yeah, well, we'll see. Obviously, they, 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 they feel they're done with Uncharted, but if they yeah. want to revisit it, they have a character they can do that with. They left it open. Where, where, it's, where it, can be, it can be new and fresh, and it doesn't have to be as, as murderous as, <laughs> yeah, as, it, as it has been. Because, uh, like I said, it's just you're, you're still killing hundreds and hundreds of people in this game. Um, yeah, you just are. It's just no way around it. All right. Um, unless you want to go into something else, I'd like to come up to ask you a closing question. Um, now you, you still haven't played The Last of Us, but you know enough about it tonally. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, or what would you like to see Naughty Dog do next? Is well, it The Last of Us Two? Is it a new kind of genre that they haven't touched upon yet? What do you think? Um. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think there's always something new, and I think that if they can tap into something that hasn't been done before, or something that something that has been done but hasn't been done in a video game before, yeah, um, that might that might be a way to go. Because I think I think that um, people are ready for 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 new things. Um, I think if anything, we'll see the reaction to Battlefield One and the success of um, Ba what was that? Uh, Battlefield 1944? Or what was that game? Um, 1942? No, 44. I thought it was 42. No, no, not Battlefield, but remember the uh, Kickstarter game. Oh, um, I can't remember the name. Right, but the success of that, I think, shows that people are ready for uh, either going back a little bit or forging ahead with something new. Because in Battlefield 1... You know, it's un untouched territory almost. It's it's World War One, so maybe people are, you know, they they might be zombied out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're definitely um, they might be warred out a little bit with the modern warfare or space wars, unless it's Star Wars, which is understandable because that's the same thing. So yeah, maybe maybe Naughty Dog needs to come up with something completely new, not a new genre, but maybe a genre that is might be new to video games. Well, that's essentially what they've been doing. Well, I mean, Last of Us is still a horror genre, which had been done before. And mm -hmm. Uncharted Venture, which had been done before, obviously. But they they took something, like you kind of were saying, that stuff that had been done before, but not as well, I guess I would say. You know, or not as um, cohesively. Mm hmm well, because of their super, super cinematic approach, which everybody tries to do now. Yeah. And, um, you know, like like if you go back and look at the Until Dawns, they sort of captured many of the horror movie tropes. But at the end of the day, that's still a, a much smaller scope than yeah. than Uncharted is, is trying to be. Again, you know, what is impressive to me about all the Naughty Dog games is that sure it is cinematic to watch, but that they tell you things about the characters that is purely well. That's game that game is game. that is what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about cinematic, it's not just um, not just the visuals. It's the form of storytelling, right? Where um, you know it's like it's you watch a TV show because we had the discussion. Um, you have more time to develop characters, things that seem much, you know, the situations are much smaller. But when you have a film, every, every action is momentous because every second of screen time is precious. And to me, that's the way it seems that Naughty Dog treats their games. Every second of screen time yeah. is precious. Yeah. Um, so that's what I, when I mean cinematic, that's right. what I'm talking about. Yeah, I agree. Uh, any closing remarks? No, like I said, I this is not a ten, oh. not like two. This is not a ten only because of what we've been discussing about the half baked, uh, the half baked uh, features that were added on. So, what would you rate it out of one to ten? Well, I think, um, like I said, it's just short of a ten. So, I would say maybe a, I'd say nine point eight. Nine point eight. Yeah. Um, and remember, um, 
I consider two a ten. Yeah. I consider the first one about a nine nine point five. Hmm. And uh, the third one was uh, eight point eight. That's my that's my ratings for them. I I I've been thinking a lot about this, and I think that if I had to rate it, I would give it a nine out of ten. Um, which I'm not rating based on how much I enjoyed it or how much I respect it, but again, purely with, with gameplay and also what I feel like fans are expecting from the series. I think that there's some things that um, people are happily surprised about, and there's some things that, um, like you've discussed before too, that the balance seemed sort of off in areas. Mm -hmm. um, so I would give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, one last thing, too, that I did actually want to bring up is I find it very classy that they uh, said something about Amy Hennig and thanked her at the end in the credits um, just because, as you know, gamers will know, she got fired from Naughty Dog in 2014 and before that she was a creative director of everything Uncharted. She was involved with the PlayStation Vita game that wasn't even done by Naughty Dog. She was involved with the novel. She was involved with the comic books. She was in charge of the entire franchise and we still don't know why she was fired. Um, but I thought it was very good for them to thank her for creating this franchise, you know? Um, and I thought that, that was in very good taste. All right, so... so that was Uncharted 4. That was Uncharted 4. Uh, come back, and uh, we have some ideas of what we would like to do next. Um, but uh, until then, this is NYC Geek Society signing off. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your cousins, tell... The stars. Tell the stars. The stars are not going to care. <laughs> hey, everybody.